In this video, I'll explain how to get started with the amplitude and period for sine and cosine functions homework sheet. Um, so in today's lesson, um, we learn more about the sine and cosine function, particularly characteristics, and we also watched a video to understand how um, sound waves can be manipulated when the amplitude and the frequency changes. So um, remember that we're talking about the graph of, well, y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x. So things we need to understand are, um, characteristics these already have, is we should understand that they have a max at 1 um, and a min at y equals negative 1. Um, so this is important to understand because as we explore the changes to our uh, function that changed the max and min, it actually changes the um, amplitude of the function. So if we just look at the graph of sine of x, and mind you, if you're following along with me on the calculator, I have my window set negative 2 pi to 2 pi with an x scale of pi over 2, and a y min at negative 3 and a y max at 1 with a y scale of 1. Hit pause if you need to. Um, so when I look at the graph of the sine of x, I see my max is positive 1, my min is negative 1. Well, we didn't get much of a chance to discuss it, but let's discuss what happens if, or, or y'all can listen to me anyway, <laughs> if we change this to 2 times the sine of x. So similar to how if we had any other function, say a quadratic function, and we put a 2 in front, it's actually going to, after taking the sine of x, multiply or double those values to get the y. So you can kind of think of it as a vertical stretch in that sense. So we can see that the max and mins are stretched. The max is stretched to positive 2 and the min is stretched to negative 2. Um, if we were to change this to 0.5 and gauge what could happen, we could probably relate this to what happens when we compress a function. So here's sine of x, where our max is at 1 and min negative 1. And now you can see that everything's the same with the exception that our max is at one half and our min is at negative one half. So what this means that is that when we're looking at the function y equals a sine x, that whatever number we plug in for a is going to be our amplitude. So let's put up here that a is our amplitude. And so what I also want you to consider is if we change this to negative 2x, or let's just do this. Let's change it first to negative sine x and see what happens. So here's sine of x. And if you think about what a negative in front of a function does for every other function, it should not surprise us that it actually makes it reflect over our x-axis, reflect downward. So um, it looks like a mirror image almost. So understand that um, if we make... Let's see what I was going to compare next. Um, if we made this negative 2 times the sine of x, our amplitude simply, if you think related to the video that we watched, it would be like the volume. So here's sine of x, and here's negative 2 sine x, the negative making it reflect, but our volume, if you think of it that way, is still a 2. So amplitude is going to be the absolute value of our a value. Our amplitude would be the absolute value of A, meaning if I have Y equals 5 sine X, I can say that my amplitude equals 5. If I have Y equals negative 5 sine of X, my amplitude is still a positive 5 because it's the absolute value of negative 5. Okay, here absolute value of 5 is still positive 5. All right, so it really isn't any different for cosine the only difference is the cosine graph is like a shift of the co of the sine graph. So let's take a look. If we have cosine of x, which looks like this, please remember that when you go to graph this, that your it begins. If you consider one cycle, which is what you need to do when you graph these functions, consider one cycle and then you repeat. The max and the min are at one and negative one, but it begins at zero and it ends at two pi. So please keep that in mind. Begin and end at the same spot with your minimum being halfway between. Now if we, um, similar to how we just did, if we make this 3 cosine x, 
then you can see that we are basically increasing our amplitude by a factor of 3. So it changes from 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So our amplitude is 3. So same characteristic here. Absolute value of A is your amplitude. Same for cosine function. Um, next, what we need to discuss is the um, frequency. So, of course, that really does require us to understand what the period of a sine function is. So, remember that the period of a function, I'll type in sine of x here, the period of function is how is the, the length of the function here on our um, our t-axis or x-axis before it starts to repeat itself. So remember these intervals are at pi over 2, so that's 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, and then it repeats again. So, the, so one cycle is one period. So very important to understand. One period is one cycle before the function repeats. one cycle before the function repeats. So that means that for y equals sine of x and for y equals cosine of x, the period for both is 2 pi. So what I want you to think about is the video we watched when we were talking about the length of waves. If this is our sine function um, and say this is a particular note, what happens if you increase the pitch? Well if you increase the pitch that means it's a higher note, so the frequency um, is going to increase, meaning you'll have more waves within the same cycle, okay, within the same um, period of, of the parent function. So if we say change it to here, then we actually could fit two of them in one cycle. So now if my period becomes instead of 2 pi, if it becomes pi, well, that would be right here, pi. If we can finish one cycle of our sine function in a period of pi, what does that look like in our function? Well, if we go to y equals, we could go in here and play with some values. So if this is sine of x, what if we make this sine of 2x? Well, let's see what happens. So this is sine of x, and this is sine of 2x. So look, so it went up, down, up. So that means it actually is finishing one period of our sine function with from 0 pi to pi. Well, what value made it do that? A value of 2. So if I want to, so in other words, if I want to change my value or my period to pi, I need to think, well, what value could I put in front of x to either shrink it or stretch it horizontally? So if I have y equals sine of 2x, where my period for a sine function is normally 2 pi, but I want my function's period to turn into 1 pi, let me see how I can verify uh, the b value. This value right here would be your b. Um, that would make that happen. So if I say, okay, how do I turn 2 pi into 1 pi? Well, if I divide it by 2, then that would cancel out leaving pi. So the value that you would divide by is actually going to be the value we stick in front here, in front of x here. So now really we talked about amplitude with y equals a times sine of x. For frequency we're going to be looking at y equals sine of bx. So what number do we put in front of x to be able to get the desired function? Um, consider if we wanted to stretch out our function. So again, if I have y equals sine bx, and I want to figure out, well, what b value would double a period? So if I want to take my normal period of 2 pi and turn it into 4 pi, what in the world would I need to divide by? So what I'm considering is, is if I have a graph here that normally is completed at 2 pi, How do I stretch it out so that it completes it in 4 pi? So now that's my halfway mark. So 
So you can equate that to, to a lower pitch, right? Remember him on the guitar? The uh, sixth string up top had a very low pitch and the waves were longer. So if you think about this, if you ever get stuck, you can always think, well, I can multiply this out. If I multiplied both sides by B, I would get 2 pi equals 4 pi times B. If I divide both sides by 4 pi, I get B equals 2 over 4 or a half. So that means that if I graph y equals sine one half x, then I should get a function that's stretched out all the way to four pi. So since our window is only set from negative two pi to two pi, let's go in our window here and stretch our x max out to four pi and see if this works. So my, what I'm hoping is that if I put one half in front of x, I will double the frequency here, or double my period rather. So let's hit graph. Here's the sine of x. Oh, I didn't change it. My bad. My bad. So I'm going to go ahead and here and type in one half x. So this is sine of x, my norm, my parent function, and this would be. Oh wow, it does. So you can see that it's completely, it's double the length. All right, so we need to understand that our, a number in front of x affects the frequency while the number in the very front affects the amplitude. So if I have y equals a times the sine of x, or excuse me, times the sine of a sine bx, then a is going to be my amplitude and b is my frequency, but my frequency affects the period. So since the period of a normal function, a parent function, is 2 pi, if I divide by that b value, then I'll get the period of my new function. We do not need to make note that even if b is negative, your period is not going to be a negative period, so make sure you do the absolute value of b. So for example, if I have y equals 2 times the sine of negative 3x, then my amplitude will be 2 because that's my a value. The absolute value of 2 is 2. And then my period, I'll use my frequency value of negative 3. So that's 2 pi divided by the absolute value of negative 3 or 2 pi over 3. All right, I hope that video helps you understand how um, amplitude and frequency affect the graph of the parent function of sine x and cosine x.